Hello, my name is Carrie Rose from Carrie Rose Health. I've been a massage therapist for over 20 years, working on people every day. I've also been a natural health practitioner for the same amount of time. Recently, I went and I took my training in Pilates, I became a certified mat Pilates instructor. We like to do lots of things in the studio clinic here at home, and I'm really missing getting my hands on people. So I thought that I would share some information with you. Today we're going to be talking about the pelvis. Here is a model of a pelvis. So we're going to specifically be talking about the back here, where the lumbar spine comes down and meets the sacrum, and then we have our iliac crest that comes over, and we have our joint here called the SI joint or sacroiliac joint. Many people have been texting me and, and talking about lower back pain recently. I believe that the primary reason why people are getting more lower back pain than maybe previously is because of the way they're sitting. So if you look on the pelvis here, on the bottom, there's two bones coming off of the pelvis. These are called your sits bones. When we sit down on a chair, we are supposed to be having our weight distributed evenly on these two bones. Unfortunately, what happens is, since the advent of the sofa, we tend to roll back our pelvis and sit on our sacrum. Our sacrum is a very flat bone and it is not designed to take that weight, that constant weight, with the stress of the rotated pelvis. So what happens is all of the connective tissue that's coming up through here is getting a pull on it. Unfortunately, what happens is it's pulling down on our back, on our spine, but it's also creating a stress on our hamstrings. So very typically, people that have lower back pain are also going to have tight hamstrings from this, and from this posterior tilt. And the hip flexors. The hip flexors come down along the vertebrae. They insert into the front of the vertebrae right here and wrap around this pelvis and then come down and insert into the femur of the leg. And they also come straight down like that. The object is when they shorten, you can imagine, it's supposed to lift your leg up. So if we're sitting like this and our legs are in a constantly flexed position, we have this stretch and pulling in the back and this shortening in the front. So today I'm going to spend some time showing you some exercise, how to alleviate this. But the most important thing is your awareness. How are you spending your time? How are you sitting when you're in the car, when you're watching TV, when you're at your home office? You probably don't have the same ergonomics that you did when you were when you are working in your, in your business or in your other office. So I want you to have this awareness and I want you to be very cognizant of how you are sitting every day. The last thing I want to talk to you about before we get into the exercise is fascia. Now, many of you may have heard about fascia. If you've been in any of my classes, you sure have. But if you're new to me and my concepts of how I work, this might be a new concept for you. Fascia is connective tissue. Fascia is a web, like imagine a cobweb, and it's throughout our whole body, and it's surrounding every cell, and every organ, and every muscle, and every nerve, and every bone. It's not even surrounding it, it's going through it, and it's, it's encompassing. In fact, if we took out all of our bones, muscles, organs, nerves, everything, and we just left the fascia, you would be able to recognize the per people around you, because it's our form, it's, it's our shape. So fascia, going back to being like a cobweb, if I ever had a cobweb in the corner and I pulled one side, the whole web is going to move with it. So I want you to think about that. If you had a tightness, let's say in your lower back, 80% of the time when we have pain, it's not the source of the pain where we're feeling it. I want you to think, is the fascia, see the connection here, coming from our hamstrings, pulling? 
Is it because my sacrum has been decompressed? Is it because I'm hunching forward at the top of my spine and I'm creating a strain on that fascia because it's all connected? So I want you to have that concept in your mind too when we're doing these exercises because we are going to be releasing a little bit in here, but we're also going to be including a lot of different areas in your body to get the best benefit possible for you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the exercises.